So, Shooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So, if you've watched any of my videos about post finasteride syndrome, also known as PFS, you'll know that I'm highly skeptical. I think there is no valid scientific evidence that this condition exists, and this isn't even a controversial opinion. My take on finasteride isn't even my own take. I'm merely just presenting the scientific consensus, since the vast majority of doctors agree with me that post finasteride syndrome isn't real, and that the symptoms people claim to be experiencing are all nocebo-induced delusions or caused by other factors that aren't related to finasteride. Even Dr. Earwig, who writes almost as many articles on PFS as Dr. Trash, admits that only a small minority of physicians believe in the existence of post-finasteride syndrome. However, People who claim to have PFS refuse to even acknowledge the possibility that their problems are due to other factors besides finasteride, and they'll lash out with estrogenic rage at people who even suggest that their current day problems are not because of their past finasteride use. So I've already debunked literally all the research that has ever been done on post-finasteride syndrome. Even their beloved Baylor study, which was in development for many years and was hyped up by the PFS community as the study that would finally give scientific legitimacy to post-finasteride syndrome's existence, it turned out to be a complete dud. Its methodology was only a small step above trying to use astrology to draw scientific conclusions. So all those years and all that money that the PFS Foundation spent funding this sacred cow of a research paper that they thought would change the narrative about finasteride forever turned out to be a bigger waste of money than buying cryptocurrency from the Hoak Twa girl, or is it the Hoak Twa Hoak Fuck it. Anyways, people who believe in PFS would like you to believe that there is this huge debate about post-finasteride syndrome, but the truth is, there isn't one. At least not anymore. There was a time when anti-finasteride trolls and neckbeards dominated the narrative in the hair loss community, so much so that even hair loss forums were absolutely infested by users spreading conspiracy theories about post-finasteride syndrome, but that was then, and times have now changed. Finasteride haters for years would insist that the more we learned about finasteride, the more we realized just how dangerous the drug is, but on the contrary, the exact opposite has happened. There's now research showing that finasteride has utility that goes far beyond its approved uses in treating hair loss and in a large prostate. Ongoing research strongly suggests that finasteride is an exceptional longevity drug that reduces the risk of all-cause mortality as well as many other health benefits, which is why I've talked about the drug in my Brian Johnson videos. <laughs> Telehealth companies are now widely making finasteride available to the masses so that pretty much everybody can benefit from all the wonderful gifts that this drug can give us. Anti-finasteride organizations like the PFS Foundation, PFS Network, Moral Medicine, or whoever you can think of, they're not even a fraction as powerful as they used to be. And after the Baylor study, they pretty much all but completely given up on funding any more scientific research, even though they're still begging for donations online. Even amongst social media, which is usually a safe harbor for conspiracy theorists, post-finasteride syndrome isn't taken seriously, and it is largely considered a joke outside of a few fringe forums, YouTube channels, and subreddits. Back when my channel was new and I first started pushing back against the anti-finasteride narrative, my opinion was not popular. I was harassed, threatened, and defamed because the PFS community knew very well that I was a strong threat to them. But try as they might, they failed to stop me from changing the narrative, and now it is too late for them, because I am no longer alone in this fight. There have been dozens of great hair loss channels run by very talented individuals that have come after my channel, and they have done their own scientific breakdown of all the medical literature on finasteride and they have all independently reached the same conclusions that I have, which is that post-finasteride syndrome is not real and that finasteride and utasteride are amazing drugs that will stop and reverse hair loss in the vast majority of people who use them. That's something that would have been considered science fiction a mere 40 years ago, which was a time many of us, including myself, actually lived through. So I'm very proud to be amongst the first generation of human beings who get to live at a time where we can effectively stop and reverse hair loss thanks to the miracle of modern medicine. Perhaps at one point there used to be a finasteride culture war, but that war is now officially over and the finasteride side has won. The PFS community and their desperation has tried reaching out to the media to spread their lies, but this too has backfired as the response from the public to these anti-finasteride hit pieces has been overwhelmingly negative. People hate these articles, and at least one of the supposed victims that was covered by the BBC last month was proven to be a liar by none other than me, and I'll go ahead and post the video 
where I cover that below. Even the biggest anti-Finasteride website on the internet, Finasteride Watch, is no longer active. That's probably because I scientifically tore apart that website so badly that its owner has become stumped and has given up on ever updating it ever again because he knows his misinformation can't go unchallenged anymore. So this has been a long intro, and I promise I will get to the point soon, but before I do, I also wanted to just take a moment to reflect back on the early years of my channel, and also to thank the people who have followed my channel, because back in 2013 or so, when I first became red-pilled about Finasteride, I have to be honest, I felt I was alone in this fight. Back then, if I said anything positive about Finasteride anywhere, I would be trolled and made fun of, but I refused to let the trolls shut me up because I knew that if they were allowed to keep proliferating their lies without any kind of pushback, it would hurt young men suffering from hair loss the very same way those lies hurt me back when I was a young man and came to the realization that I was losing my hair. I knew I couldn't do this myself, which is why I took to social media to begin with. And here I am over a decade later with over 50,000 subscribers and dozens of new hair loss influencers all fighting the good fight. If it weren't for your support, none of this would have been possible and we wouldn't be in this position where people can just go online and actually get good, scientifically accurate information about finasteride. That's all I ever wanted to do when I made this channel. I was never interested or motivated by things like money, fame, or glory. All I wanted to do was just change the narrative about finasteride so I could make the internet a safer and better place to find good information about hair loss. And I couldn't do it without your help. That's why I call you my fellow hair loss witchers, because you have helped me slay the monsters of misinformation. So thank you guys so much for helping me achieve 50,000 subscribers and nearly 10 million total views on this channel. I promise I'll be doing a Q&A mukbang video soon where you get to see me stuff my face with junk food while answering hair loss questions, 90% of which I imagine will probably be shedding questions, but that's okay because that's what I'm here for. But getting back to the subject of this video, I wanted to go over an interesting phenomenon that I've noticed about about post-finasteride syndrome in particular. And let me say up front that unlike most of my videos that sum up the research on different topics, this video is going to be a little bit more speculative than usual, but I still think this is way too strong of a correlation to ignore completely. So even though the PFS movement, as I've already said, has largely been defeated, there is still a vocal contingency of PFS believers who compensate for their dwindling numbers by being as loud and obnoxious as they possibly can. And it's always the same four or five people posting on every single finasteride video on YouTube talking talking about how evil finasteride is and how it's ruined their life or ruined the life of someone they know, blah, blah, blah. I could probably name all of them just off the top of my head since they comment on my videos a lot too. But when they do comment, they never have any kind of scientific rebuttal to all the evidence-based data I break down on my channel. Usually it's either ad hominem attacks or they'll use downright emotional manipulation. They'll say things like, don't you know how many people's lives you've destroyed, Kevin? You have blood on your hands, mate. Or they'll say things like, how can you deny that these people have symptoms? Do you think they're making it all up? You're a monster, Kevin. Well, in at least some cases, yes, I do think at least some of them are lying. Like Kyle, who was interviewed by the BBC recently. But the reason why I think he's a liar is because I proved it. And you can watch the video I made about it if you want to see that proof. But to any PFS people watching this video, and I know there are definitely going to be some of them, I want you to know that I don't think Everybody who claims to have persistent symptoms from finasteride is lying. I believe many of them. Perhaps even most of them really do believe that their past use of finasteride is indeed responsible for their present symptoms. And I do believe these people are really experiencing problems that are making their lives worse, and I feel bad for them. So to better examine this, let's first take a look at what the symptoms of post-finasteride syndrome are supposed to be. I'm not going to examine every single claim because some of them are patently absurd, like claiming that finasteride made their anus numb or claiming that finasteride can change your sexual orientation or even gender identity making people transgender. Rather, let's go ahead and look at some of the more common claims from the PFS community. The most common claims are that finasteride gave them erectile dysfunction that persisted even years after they stopped the drug or the claim that the drug gave them permanent brain fog and depression. So most of the symptoms attributed to post-finasteride syndrome are either sexual or neurological in nature. But this begs the question, how come we didn't really hear about post-finasteride syndrome back in the 1990s when the drug was new? The 90s was before the era of social media, but we definitely still had the internet back then. Believe me, I'm old enough to remember the 90s, and we even had things like internet forums and message boards back then that you could shitpost on. You could even play online multiplayer games like Star Siege Tribes and Quake 3 Arena and have 12-year-olds insult your mother just like they do today in Call of Duty. Things weren't all that much different back then, chums. There was just more lag since we had to use 56k modems. Still, there was nary a peep about post-finasteride syndrome back then. Even during the 
social media era of the mid to late 2000s, post-finasteride syndrome wasn't in the medical vernacular despite the drug already having had millions of prescriptions filled. It wasn't really until the late 2010s and early 2020s that interest in post-finasteride syndrome peaked. That's nearly 30 years after finasteride was first introduced to the market in 1992 as Proscar. So if post-finasteride syndrome were real, how come it took so long for it to go from being nearly completely unheard of to the point that it became the top search listing on Google every time you search for finasteride? Well, the original rise in reports of PFS occurred around 2011 and 2012 when several media reports appeared trying to link finasteride to persistent symptoms. This led to multiple lawsuits against Merck, and in order to cover themselves up legally, Merck added persistent symptoms and depression to the finasteride package insert, even though the FDA at the time stated that there was no compelling evidence of a link between finasteride and any of those symptoms. If you look at the frequency of Google searches for post-finasteride syndrome, you see that there are practically none from the year 2004 until 2010. The searches then rise, and for a while the searches plateau, but in recent years they have been rising yet again. Now, this isn't proof that claims about PFS are getting more common, but since we don't have any registry of PFS cases, this does tell us that interest in PFS has risen just in the last few years. So like I already said earlier, I don't think that everyone who claims to have post-finasteride syndrome is lying or having an placebo effect, and I'm not saying they're all just victims of online social media contagion. That's definitely the case for many of them, for sure, but I do feel that many of these people are actually sincere and are having real symptoms that they think are post-finasteride syndrome. When people who think they have PFS tell me that they have things like erectile dysfunction, low libido, depression, and brain fog, I accept that they think they are having real symptoms. I just don't think the symptoms are related to finasteride. Like I've said in many other videos, erectile dysfunction and depression are common enough in the general population, even in young men, that you can't assume that someone who develops these problems has them because they took finasteride at some point in the past. That is the main problem the PFS network has in proving that PFS exists. They have never done a study showing that these symptoms occur more commonly in people who have previously used finasteride compared to people who have never used it at all. But if these people really are having symptoms that they blame on post-finasteride syndrome, and if these symptoms have become more common in the last few years, and if this is not due to social media contagion from anti-finasteride social media, which is actually dying down like I said earlier, then what could possibly account for a rise of these symptoms? I want you guys to really think about this before I tell you, because the answer might surprise you. So let me ask you this. Is there any particular event that happened between the years 2020 and 2022 that could possibly explain the increase in internet interest in post-finasteride syndrome? Could it perhaps be something that is being caused by a real condition that could cause symptoms similar to those that are thought to be caused by post-finasteride syndrome? Do you choose see where I'm going with this? In case you haven't figured it out yet, I believe that many people who think they have post-finasteride syndrome are actually suffering from an entirely different condition. I think what they really have is long COVID. So, I can already see people writing in the comment section right now, but Kevin, how can you even believe that long COVID is a real thing when you don't even believe that post-finasteride syndrome is real, huh? Why don't you explain that one, bro? Okay. We're talking about two completely different things here, Chooms. In the case of long COVID, we're talking about a virus that has been shown to attack and destroy brain cells, specifically dopamine neurons, and dopamine is very important in preventing depression. In the other case, we're talking about the drug finasteride that is out of the system completely within just a few days after stopping it and whose effects on DHT disappear within a couple weeks of stopping the drug. Finasteride has never been shown to have any permanent effects on hormone levels or brain brain function as opposed to the coronavirus, which actually destroys brain tissue permanently. That's why long COVID has much more evidence to support it as a real syndrome as opposed to post-finasteride syndrome, which doesn't have any good evidence to support its existence at all. Unfortunately, long COVID is very real and it is very common. At the end of the COVID pandemic, the virus had mutated to become more benign, but it also became more contagious, meaning nearly everyone on the planet Earth has contracted COVID at least once, and often multiple times at that. The incidence of long COVID has been estimated at between 10 and 26% of adults with COVID, and it's also been estimated that about 400 million people across the world have had long COVID. Estimates of the incidence of long COVID 
could vary depending on how it's defined, but in general, it is defined as symptoms lasting at least three months after a COVID infection. The really interesting thing here, Jones, is that a lot of the symptoms of long COVID perfectly overlap with the symptoms of post finasteride syndrome. Some symptoms of long COVID include fatigue, headaches, anxiety, and brain fog. In this meta-analysis of over 10,500 patients with long COVID, fatigue was seen in 37% of cases, brain fog in 32% of cases, anxiety in 23% of cases, and depression in 17% of cases, as well as other neurological problems, as you can see here. So you can see that a lot of the symptoms attributed to PFS occur in post-COVID syndrome, also known as long COVID. Not only that, erectile dysfunction is very common following COVID infection as well, occurring in over 50% of subjects in this study. Of course, erectile dysfunction is a big part of post-finasteride syndrome and is probably the most commonly reported symptom. So to summarize all this, all the symptoms that are attributed to post finasteride syndrome can be caused by post-COVID syndrome, and I believe strongly that many people who are blaming their symptoms on finasteride may actually be suffering from long COVID instead. In fact, I'd go even further than that and say that people complaining of post finasteride syndrome are even more likely than the average person to get long COVID. Sounds ridiculous? It's actually not. I've already actually made a video about this, which I'll link below. In that video, I pointed out that androgenic alopecia itself is is a risk factor for getting COVID. And obviously, anyone claiming to have PFS must have androgenic alopecia, especially since virtually everybody who claims to have PFS is a young man who wouldn't take finasteride for anything other than hair loss since they're too young to have issues with an enlarged prostate. But there is another important point I'd like to bring up that is even more important than that. Let me ask you, what does every PFS person have in common? I mentioned already that they're almost all young men, but in terms of their ideology, what is the thing that every anti finasteride asteroid person on the planet believes in. I'll tell you, every single one of them, almost without exceptions, is an anti-vaxxer. You bring up the COVID vaccine to anyone who thinks they have PFS, and the most common response you'll get is that they'd literally rather die than take the vaccine. It makes perfect sense if you think about it. I mean, they see themselves as victims of finasteride, so why would they trust anything else from the medical establishment? This kind of irrational distrust in mainstream medicine and science brings a lot of PFS people down what I like to call the PFS to all right pipeline. This is the reason why finasteride haters are most commonly found in forums that are dominated by alt-right black-pilled incels and neo-Nazi neckbeards who believe that finasteride is some New World Order conspiracy theory that's being orchestrated by Big Pharma with the help of George Soros and the Jews to feminize men in order to help accelerate the great replacement that they all believe in. This is especially ironic, though, since the man they admire more than anyone else in history, Donald Trump, is literally a finasteride user himself. The reason why people who think they have PFS being anti-vaxxers is so especially relevant though is because multiple studies that I'll list below show that getting the COVID vaccine greatly reduces the risk of getting long COVID. So people who believe in PFS would be even more likely to get long COVID since they are all anti-vaxxers. So do most of the people who claim to have PFS actually have long COVID? I'm not sure about most, but I definitely think it's probable that many of them do. It's also possible most of them are just experiencing a placebo effect, and certainly not all people complaining of PFS have post-COVID syndrome, especially since some of them started complaining about these symptoms before COVID arrived on the scene. But what's especially sad about all this is that none of these people who think they have post-finasteride syndrome will ever find out what is really causing their problems because they refuse to accept even a remote possibility that their problems are due to anything other than finasteride. That is why they lash out and get angry at people who refuse to accept their self-diagnosis of PFS, even though these people, including myself, are trying to help them. I think the overlap between long COVID symptoms and post-finasteride syndrome is so remarkably strong that if someone got those symptoms after having taken finasteride, they would definitely, 100%, without a shadow of a doubt, blame these post-COVID symptoms on finasteride. Like I said, this video is more speculative than most of my content, but I definitely think there may be something to my theory. I'm sure some people will disagree with me and I'll hear about it in the comment section, and that's perfectly okay. I know I have to be doing something right, otherwise I would have never have gotten to 50,000 subscribers. So once again, I thank you all for helping me make this glorious achievement. Even to the people that like to disagree with everything I post but are still loyal viewers of my channel, I cherish your presence on my channel and I hope to provide great hair loss and science based content on this channel for many years to come. 
Okay, Jooms, that's it for now, but I have a slightly unconventional video coming out soon that I think you guys will definitely like, so stay tuned, and thank you so much for watching. God bless.